Hey folks, Nick Culbertson here with another audio kit tutorial for you, hot off the press, and I have a dongle today. I have a dongle today because we're going to be talking about adding MIDI support to your audio kit application. What's this I have back here, you say? Oh, well, I'll show you. This is my MIDI keyboard. A MIDI keyboard by itself doesn't make any sound. I mean, it makes this sound. But it doesn't make any sound, so we need a brain to make the sound, and in this case, our brain is going to be our cellular device. You can connect the MIDI with a cable and a dongle like this, which we'll go over in a little bit, or you can use Bluetooth. Really, it's your world and we're just living in it. Let's get started. First, I'm gonna download a fresh copy of the cookbook application from AudioKit over on GitHub, link in the description. So let's crack this bad boy open and run it in the simulator. And the build failed. We're not off to a great start, but I'm actually glad this happened. Since the audio kit cookbook is built around different Swift packages from time to time, especially when you're jumping around from version to version, your packages can get outdated and you might get stuck with an older cache of that package. Fortunately, this is an easy fix. We'll just go up to File, Packages, Update to the latest package version, then go to Product, Clean Build Folder, just for good measure. Now we can run our application again, and hey presto, it works. I'll navigate to the instrument EXS recipe that we've been working off of from the other videos. If you haven't already, check out the how to make an instrument app in audio kit video to better understand how this example works. Now let's close up the simulator and we will navigate to the instrument EXS Swift file and start adding our MIDI support. All right, so one thing from last time, if you've been following along, you'll see that the method for loading an instrument has been updated to load instrument with URL. Now with this new method, you can use a single method to load your EXS, AU presets, and audio file instruments. When changes like this occur, and they will occur, I'll keep you updated on the changes in the video's description or in the pinned comment. There are a few different ways to add MIDI support to this instrument. If you right click on the MIDI sampler and jump to definition, you can see that there is an option to enable MIDI and receive MIDI data here. There is also another class called MIDI instrument that might be better suited for handling an instrument with MIDI, but I prefer adding the MIDI listener directly to our instrument EXS class. So we'll navigate back to our instrument EXS file and add the MIDI listener protocol. Xcode will then throw this red flag on the play saying that our class doesn't conform to the protocol MIDI listener. It may show you this automatically or you may have to try and build your project for it to show it, but it should come up. If we right click, jump to definition on the MIDI listener, we'll see a bunch of MIDI specific methods that are required to be included in our class. Fortunately, we can go back to our class and just click on this little stop sign and fix and Xcode will automatically populate our class with those methods. Now, one problem is that our pretty concise class is now filled with all these MIDI methods. That makes the MIDI protocol a perfect candidate for becoming a class extension. So let's remove the MIDI listener class protocol and add a class extension for our instrument EXS conductor. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to create an extension that adopts the MIDI listener protocol. Hit the stop sign again and fix it and kablammo, we have our MIDI methods. First, I'll remove all these filler code placeholders. And next, we want to take our instrument's play and stop methods and call them from our MIDI listener methods. But before we do that, I'll show you one last option if you don't want to have all your MIDI listener protocol methods in this same Swift file. What you can do is you can create a new Swift file and name it something like instrument EXS plus MIDI. Then you can take that class extension code and just plonk it right down in there. I'll just grab this code block and we'll move it over to our new Swift file. And now we have everything nice and neat. I prefer having everything all in one Swift file for now, but as your project goes, this is probably a good option. Also, I should point out that I learned about class extensions by looking at other examples inside of AudioKit. So as much as AudioKit is a great tool for creating audio apps, it is also an amazing learning tool for Swift. All right, enough pillow talk about AudioKit. Let's get back and start wiring some things up. I'll add the MIDI listener back to our class and let's clean up some of these methods we won't be using. The methods we'll be paying attention to are the note handling, MIDI CC events, and the pitch wheel. I'm going to scroll back up to my main class and I'm going to grab the instrument play method and copy it into our received MIDI note on method. We'll also pass it the note number, the velocity, and the channel from our MIDI controller to our app. And next we'll copy over our instrument stop method and pass it the controller's values. Notice there is also a velocity parameter for the note off, 
but we don't need that. In fact, feed that parameter. Next, we have our MIDI CC stuff. This is for controlling all the non-note stuff on the MIDI controller, all the knobs and whatnot, all the whatnot knobs. If you search MIDI CC online, you'll see that there are some recommended mappings for each of the MIDI controls. By default, the control for MIDI CC number one is the mod wheel on a MIDI keyboard. The links to these controllers can be assigned when you're creating your EXS or AU preset instrument. And I also made a couple videos about making those kinds of instruments, so check that out too if you ain't done checked it out yet. The last method that we'll need is for our MIDI pitch wheel, and this is actually a separate control from the MIDI CC. Rather than having 127 points, it has 16,383, making the pitch change between states super smooth, like a buttered up surfboard on a water slide filled with butter. And that is all we need to do for the controller methods. We do need to set up a connection to our MIDI device in our class, so we'll create a MIDI class instance, and in our init method, we'll add ourself as a MIDI listener. MIDI dot add listener self. Then in the start method, we'll open our MIDI input with MIDI dot open input. Finally, in our stop method, we can close all inputs. This architecture can be different depending on your needs. You may want the user to be able to turn MIDI on and off or select an input manually. That can all be configured, but in this example, we add a listener when the class is created and handle opening and closing the inputs of our default controller when the view appears and disappears. You may also want to call MIDI.ClearListeners at some point, either to clean things up or before you call AddListener for a second time to prevent getting duplicate listener events. There are currently two examples of using MIDI Listener in the cookbook. You can look at those to see some more examples. One is for MIDI Monitor, where you can see that they also have an input for Bluetooth, and there's another one in MIDI Port Test Conductor. A simple way to locate these is by searching in your project for MIDI listener. And finally, after all that flap jawing, let's build our app and see how the MIDI works. When you build to the simulator, it should seem like everything works just like it did before, but MIDI is not supported in the simulator, so you will need an actual device for this. So let's build it to our device and see how things are running. I'm gonna lay that here. Here, I'll show you how I'm plugging everything up. This is the Apple's Camera Connect kit. I'm gonna plug it into the lightning adapter. It's about to become cord soup. Then I take this cord and I plug it into my USB power supply. And then finally, I have this cord, which is gonna go into my Arturia MIDI keyboard. Here it is, it kind of spazzes out for a second, but then we have it. So, nothing is working. So now I'm gonna open it up and we should have sound. Hey, we do have sound. Okay, so you can hear it has sound. It also has, uh, how am I gonna, how am I gonna do this? All right, here we go. That's just so, I just look so cool right now. All right, now let me move it here. Oh yeah, this is how a piano is meant to be played. All right, so you'll notice that the pitch wheel is working for us. And also we have our velocity response. Now for a rousing demonstration of the capabilities of the lap MIDI. Anyways, it's working, and that, that's what we wanna have happen, is for it to work. The mod wheel is not operating with this instrument, but I actually have another application on here where that is working. It's a super secret app I'm working on. Nobody knows about it, but you. And here's how the mod wheel sounds with that. Cool. Now with all the other MIDI CC value stuff, you can start to like, you know, set them up for all these different knobs and chords. Really, it's however you want to set it up. I know there are some applications where they have it where you can set those things up as the application is running. Uh, but we, we're not worried about that. We just wanted to get you the, the intro level of how to get started with MIDI. Uh, you may need one of these dongles. You may be able to do Bluetooth. If you do have Bluetooth MIDI, try it out and let us know in the comments how it works out for you. You know, you may or may not need to add this MIDI support to your application. I think a lot of people these days do expect for an application that is an instrument to have MIDI support, but it's your application. You do what you want. But then again, you might get bad reviews if you don't have MIDI support, but you know, you can't please everyone. So I don't, I don't even think you should try to please everyone, but you're gonna be displeasing a lot of people if you don't have MIDI support. But on the other hand, you could have MIDI support 
and it might be a good idea, but I don't always know if that's what you... A few last things before we head out. Once you make your own project outside of the cookbook, make sure that you set up background audio capability, and if you want the device to stay awake while you're playing MIDI, you'll want to set the audio session category. Just search audio session and you'll find an example of it in the cookbook. This code snippet added to your main app file does several things. It allows your app to override the device's mute switch. It stops other apps from killing your app in the background, and it allows MIDI to work while the screen is off. If you right click on one of the options, you can see what other categories are available or refer to Apple's documentation on AV Audio Session. Now that you're done getting your learn on, it's time to get your MIDI on. And now you are armed with the power to become a MIDI master. Hey folks, thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments how this MIDI support's working out for you. Hope you're liking this series. We just got one more to go with that AUV3 support, baby. Then we're gonna bring it on home. We'll be ready to release this app. We'll be ready to move on to new subjects. Who knows? Who knows what we'll do next? Anyways, I've been this sweet little dongle. It's been nice talking to you and I'll see you all next time.